period of Japan's high culture began in the 6th century, spurred by a flow of courtly and Buddhist ideas from China. Before that, Japanese culture was comparatively simple. Agriculture and metals had been introduced from the old world civilizations in the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC. Originally, Japanese religious practices were animist, revering natural phenomena, ancestors and tribal chieftains. This later became known as Shinto, to distinguish it from Buddhism. Expressways straddling the giant cities of modern Japan from every quarter are now the massive symbol of this secular state's achievements. beautiful crafted wooden houses of the old capital, Kyoto, have so far been preserved. American bombing in World War II destroyed every big city in Japan except Kyoto, which was spared because of its heritage of old buildings and temples. But Japan's post-war economic expansion is tearing down much of what had remained of old Kyoto. Owners of small shops demonstrate against the building of big new chain stores, which they say threatens the old social fabric, as well as their livelihoods. These people have a lot to lose from the heavy tramp of material progress, more so than the people of the other cities which have been completely rebuilt since the war. Shinjuku is the latest of many large business districts scattered through Tokyo. Construction of these buildings required new earthquake-proof technology developed here. High above Tokyo, in the offices of Japan's largest construction company, Taisei Corporation, a team of design engineers is working on their latest project. Mr. Kimura is the team leader. Taisei's motto is, build today for a better tomorrow. The company was founded in 1873, when Japan was modernizing after 200 years of almost total isolation. After 1946, the company helped to rebuild the shattered nation. Taisei now has branch offices in several overseas countries, building everything from hotels to undersea tunnels. The Kimura family, watching home movies. The enviable, ideal picture of middle-class family life. Kimura is quite well off. He's proud of his two children and charming wife. Today is a very special day for the young son, Kentaro, the day of Shichigo-san. It's a Shinto ceremony for boys of five and girls of three and seven. For the occasion, Kentaro's grandparents have bought him his first kimono, which is worth a great deal. Always appear at your best, because wherever you go, you represent your family. Even at five, there is a remarkable sense of personal dignity. It's said that a man should always feel an obligation to his parents for the countless things they did for him. The only way for him to repay this obligation 
is to give his own children a good upbringing in their turn. The Japanese people's concern with family obligations means that their society is deeply conservative. No special day is complete without a gift. The ritual appeals to people's sense of occasion rather than demanding their belief in some dogma. Japanese festivals have no rivals for variety and brilliance. Not a day passes without a festival somewhere. Most are Shinto rather than Buddhist. At the center is the Mikoshi, a portable shrine into which the local god is said to return to earth each year. While 66% of Japanese claim no religious faith, participation in festivals is always popular. Shinto is less a religion than the celebration of a way of life. It's not much affected by modern skepticism. The Japanese understand that even the oldest tradition was once new and all must adapt to innovations. What is immutable is the people's sense of history which they act out on the streets and in the temples and shrines. Samurai traditions are followed keenly, not simply as a sport, but because the rigorous training and discipline which these martial arts demand provide a path to spiritual enlightenment. Most festivals spring from a particular place or community. In the port city of Nagasaki, the Okunshi Matsuri celebrates the city's ancient trading and cultural links with China. The seven Chinese gods of good fortune are shown arriving in Japan by ship. Children are given pride of place and this ensures the festival's continuity through the generations. The great Buddha of Nara was cast in bronze in 749 AD. The statue weighs 450 tons. To house it, the colossal temple of Todaiji was built, the largest wooden structure in the world. Nothing shows the people's sense of history so well as the replacement of Todaiji's roof tiles. This has been done regularly every 250 years. The dedication of the new roof is by tradition celebrated with public entertainments. Buddhism is a very tolerant religion. If kabuki and traditional dances will please the Buddha, so will the SKD chorus line. New Year is the most important festival. It's both Buddhist and Shinto. A time to pay off all debts, purify the house and start with a clean slate. The old year's good luck arrows are burnt and replaced with new to defeat the devils. A season of friendship, joy and renewal. People visit temples and shrines all over Japan. Four million go to the Meiji shrine alone. This year your lucky arrow will hit the mark. The Dolls Festival is specially for girls. 
On the 3rd of March every year, Mrs. Kimura helps Yasuko put the dolls on display for visiting friends and relatives, with offerings of rice cakes and flowers. The dolls are handed down through the generations from mother to daughter. At the top are the emperor and empress, and so on down through the court hierarchy. Mrs. Kimura is taking Kentaro off to his first day at kindergarten. The Kimuras are fortunate. They live in a good suburb, and the kindergarten nearby is a good one. It could well be his passport to a good education, and from there a successful career. Last year's class has been asked to take the new ones in hand till they feel more at home. Kimura lives in Yokohama, the major port city adjoining Tokyo. He travels an hour and a half each way to work. His company's first project was the construction of Tokyo's Shimbashi Railway Station in 1872. Taisei are still building railways, the intercity new lines, nicknamed bullet trains by foreigners. They also construct and export whole factories to Southeast Asia, ready for work at the turn of a key. The ranking system in Japan is inescapable because the Japanese language supports it. It's specially noticeable in the workplace, the way people relate. Kimura is working with his juniors, his kohai, men who joined the company after he did. To them, he'll always be senior, their senpai. The language of a computer may be impersonal, but a kohai, junior, must always use respectful language to his senpai, senior, while in reply, the senpai uses brusque, commanding phrases. Now, it's Kimura's turn to play the kohai role to his senpai, the manager. So now, it's Kimura who uses respect language, while his senpai, in reply, is brusque to him. The two speech forms are completely different and can never be relaxed, either at work or socially. Such complexity of language and custom allows the Japanese to believe Westerners can never really understand them. After hours, groups of salarymen patronize the thousands of bars and beer halls of Shinjuku and other centers. There's no clear line between being on and off duty. Kimura takes responsibility for his team's work, even if something goes wrong which he knows nothing about. So he needs to get to know his colleagues intimately, sharing their leisure hours together. He jokes that he tells his wife he's waiting for a less crowded train, when really it's more that he enjoys a few drinks with his workmates. The Taisei company has a tennis court for its employees. The senpai kohai rule still holds good. Kimura plays with colleagues on weekends. His wife plays with her own friends during the week.
An advantage in being far out from Tokyo is that the family lives in a block of flats next to a park. Usually the Japanese family centers around the mother. Fathers take a much less important role. They're so often away from home. There's a deep respect for the arts. Many people have an artistic hobby. Mrs. Kimura teaches Ikebana at home, especially to foreigners. She's also a student at one of the Ikebana schools, which jealously preserve their tradition. I don't think so, Diane. It is nice, but if you cut here and... Kimura edits a magazine for the local pottery club and he recently shared an exhibition of his work. This is what he'll do when he retires. Combining pottery with his engineering, he's carefully arranged his equipment in a cupboard. This is a reunion of a primary school class of 30 years ago. The teacher is the guest of honor. People take every opportunity they can to be with others they can talk with as equals, such as old classmates. They don't require respect language, though the teacher does. Women use a more polite form of language than men. The reunion is more than a social gathering. Classmates are part of the network of connections one uses to ask favors and get things done. The men of Kimura's generation entered the workforce in 1949, when Japan was just beginning its phenomenal rise from a wasteland of bomb craters to affluence. They've spread out through the myriad of business which together have made this small corner of the world a colossal commercial empire. Japan has two and a third times as many science graduates as the United Kingdom and West Germany put together, which have a slightly larger combined population than Japan. Taisei build automated warehouses, designed by Kimura. The new building and the stacking machinery are checked before being handed over to the owner. Kimura believes in company loyalty, but he's not one of the so-called super dynamic workhorses who rebuilt Japan after its wartime devastation. He's a family man, a my home type. The real super dynamic workhorse these days is automation. Japanese heavy industry has already been fully established. Now a new industrial revolution has switched the power to computers and robots. Fujitsu Fanuk makes robot machine tools for factories. Well, more precisely, their robots make more robots, and they do it 24 hours a day. This computer-controlled workshop does the work of 60 men with two. Seventy percent of all the world's robots are at work in Japan. They'll be the next export boom. This robot is reproducing itself.
production of the prestigious newspaper Asahi Shimbun has been transformed. With editing and printing fully computerized, Asahi Shimbun can bring out a hundred editions of newspapers and magazines a day. It seems contradictory that such an overpopulated country should lead the world in automation. Yet the Japanese welcome it. To sustain employment, the economy must continue to expand and it must find new areas of development. New technology creates growth, an ever brighter future. When Asahi Shimbun brought in the new equipment, no time was lost through strikes. Big companies can afford to protect their workers' jobs. But automation is getting cheaper every day. When the small backyard companies can afford robots, their workers may face unemployment. casualties already. Some people have lost their special skills, like typesetters who are now working at dispatch. Despite the strains and fractures resulting from Japan's leap into the future, there's a reverence for the long established order of things, an acceptance of authority which today's leaders can count on. A sacred flame from the Usa Shrine is taken by management and workers of Nippon Steel Corporation to fire their new blast furnace. It's carried through the company housing estate to the Oita Steel Mill. Religion, Shinto, or the various traditions of Buddhism has been associated throughout Japanese history with supporting powerful groups in society. And this is certainly so today. Religious training is predicated on obedience to superiors, rigid seniority, and conformity within the religious order. A Zen Buddhist monk sits in meditation, seeking enlightenment by breaking through self-will. Zen was introduced in the 12th century However otherworldly it once was, it soon became a spiritual prop to feudalism and the emperor system. Monks were taught to be spiritually at one with the emperor. It was said, the first duty of religion is to seek to preserve the existence of the state. When feudalism gave way to capitalism last century, the precepts of Zen were reapplied to the needs of the new system. The result? Corporate Zen. A convention of Mr. Donut franchise holders prays in a circle. Many businesses send their employees to temples for training. The employee's spiritual enlightenment isn't the real goal. What is taught is selfless dedication to hard work and company profits. <laughs> The corporate machine rides on the path to enlightenment. <laughs> These people are on a company outing, staying at the luxurious new Portopia Hotel on Port Island, off the city of Kobe. Millions of holidaymakers flock to Port Island to visit the Portopia Exposition, where Japan's future is on view. The port of Kobe has no room to expand, so Port Island was reclaimed from the sea. 
As well as providing shipping docks, it is now the site for a brand new, fully planned city. The island is connected to the mainland by a computer-controlled monorail, which has guards, but no drivers. Community centers, department stores, parks. This is the model for Japan's future cities, where yesterday will meet tomorrow. The Portopia Exposition is a celebration of the future. Visitors absorb messages about the technological revolution from those who control it, the big companies. Power is the key to future prosperity. But where will the energy come from? Nuclear or geothermal power? The sea? Or oil extracted from eucalyptus leaves? Portopia's most interesting exhibit is Japan's greatest natural resource, the Japanese people. Energetic, highly trained, they, more than any other nation, anticipate and accept technological change. They believe it'll look after them. They face the future without fear, as actors in a great drama. For the children, the future is a fantasy of love and hope. A computer-operated kabuki actor the princess of light. Kentaro, as a young man of the 21st century, may well live in a post-industrial society, but his parents' traditions will probably have endured.